You know, I never thought I could identify on a personal level with Nick Fury, but his love for cats... I get that. My name is Adarius and welcome to the review of Captain Marvel. So Captain Marvel is the 21st movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Holy shit, there's a lot now. It takes place in the mid-19s, I believe it was 1995, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't matter, it takes place in the 19s. Brie Larson plays Verse, or Carol Danvers as she's really called. And she's trained to become a Kree warrior hero something. Because the Kree is in an open war with these aliens who are able to transform themselves into any being they see. Anyways, she happens, she gets sent to Earth and now she is on a hunt for these aliens because they are trying to find a light speed engine which will make them able to win the war. And then she's gonna stop that. And then shit happens and unfolds and you find out what her backstory is because guess what? Captain Marvel has amnesia. That is basically the movie. There's not much to it. Actually, this is one of the more simple storylines in the MCU, so I'm not gonna go ahead and spoil things for you. So let's just jump into what I liked about this movie. So what did I like about this movie? Well, first of all, I liked the charisma between Captain Marvel and Nick Fury. Every time they had dialogue together, it just felt fresh and it felt real and genuine. And the way they're being snarky at each other is just uplifting. And by that, I mean, we need that before we get into Endgame because that's going to be depressing. Ah, shit. I'm pretty sure anyway but nonetheless the chemistry between these two characters was good it wasn't great but it was it was good it was one of the most positive thing about this movie the other thing i liked about this movie is the world building just as kind of galaxy did with the galaxy of the mcu this also does with some few planets that we get to see with captain marvel and i just love this vaping colorful alien world that we get dumped into and just shown and just everything looks and feels like it is actually really has history and i just like that attention to detail and also the visual effects are for the most part pretty good i mean they're not top notch but they're not bad they're decent sometimes even great there's also a good sense of humor in this movie but it doesn't make it into a comedy it just lightens the tone a bit and it makes the simple plot easier to digest <laughs> I will get into that later on. But nonetheless, I just liked the comedy in this movie. It was lighthearted. It didn't try to force the comedy. More like it was just comedy sprouting between characters and the way they interact between each other. But I dig the comedy. I mean, it made me laugh out loud a couple of times, so it was decent. I also like this simple story because this movie doesn't try to over this late into the MCU. It just tries to tell this origin story before we get to Infinity War. Or not Infinity War, Endgame. <laughs> Infinity War, we had that before we get to Endgame, which gives it more time to focus on the characters. It gives us more time to let these characters develop fully before we throw them into the last ensemble of the phase three of the MCU. That doesn't necessarily mean that it utilizes these aspects to its fullest, but it does make this movie easier to digest. It makes it easier to watch because it is light on content. I also like the bad guy's abilities compared to Captain Marvel's abilities because since they're so different from hers, you get some interesting fight scenes and finally they utilize it here in this movie. There's a person who's able to grab things far away and throw them around, whereas Captain Marvel is more like punch and shoot with your fists kind of gal. So they need to approach the fights differently. They need to use the ability to the fullest and apply it to the situation in a different way than their opponent. And it just made some interesting fight scenes when this was applied. And this, I don't think this is a spoiler. This is the absolute first part of the movie. It's not even the movie, it's before the movie. However, you know that when you see a Marvel movie, you see this logo, Marvel logo starting to appear where you see some stills from different MCU movies of the different heroes and then pans down and you see Marvel Studios. They did that here, but instead they showed all the cameos that Stan Lee has had through the MCU movies. So it's the same movies, it's the same scenarios as the heroes, but it's where his cameo was present. And then it pans out a show of Marvel Studios and then that fades to black and all it says is... Thank you, Stan. I believe it's just 
thank you Stan or something like that. It just touched my heart because it felt like it was one of the more subtle, genuine, respectful tributes you could make to this man. I just appreciate it and it's, it actually did a good job to set the tone in the beginning of the movie. So I need to get props for that. So nicely done Marvel. However, there's also a lot of things that I didn't like about this movie. First of all, Brie Larson was not charismatic enough for the role. She was quite stoic. I mean, don't get me wrong, when she was cracking jokes and being sarcastic for her friends and against Nick Fury, she was good and you actually saw some humanity and character bird inside of her. However, for the most part, she was just a stoic face that didn't really do much. She didn't really express emotion, she didn't really express frustration. She was a rookie, so she did get her ass handed to her a couple of times, but for my taste, she didn't get it handed to her enough. She very quickly at the end of the movie becomes kind of a Mary Sue, just overpowered. I mean, she goes super sane at one point, and I mean, glowing hair, you know, pointing upwards. She goes into an extreme powerful state, and after that, everything just becomes a cakewalk for her. There's no real struggle here, there's no real uphill battle, and I know they want to kind of make this movie a statement like they did with the Black Panther, that girls can be as powerful as guys or <laughs> boys or men, if not more powerful. However, I don't think this was the proper way to do it, because the only discrimination she really had was that some boys didn't think that she should be play baseball as a girl. And other than that, she doesn't really show a strong will as much that she's just doing this because this is a job. And she becomes too powerful too quickly at the end, in my opinion, because after that, it's just a kickball for her. So yeah, they could have done it better. They needed to show her struggle more and then earning her power, but yeah. Then there is the pacing. The pacing is kind of all over the place because first you see her fight in space, then she crash land on Earth, then she meets with Nick Fury, then they need to break into some place and gather some information, then they need to fight this bad guy, then you have some kind of a plot rated twist, then you get to the final battleground, and that is it. But I kind of feel disjointed the way it's presented. I just wish that they had smoothed the story out more, especially since this is a simple story, which brings me also to my next point and that is this story was simple and allowed them to focus more on these characters however they don't really do it i know we know nick fury at this point and Agent colson is kind of just an extended cameo in this movie but we don't really know captain mao and we need to know her more we need to see some emotion we need to see her reacts for when she's kind of getting her old memory back or seeing clues that she had a life on earth before she got into outer space we need to see her comprehending the fact that there's a whole life existing on this planet that she's now on that she doesn't really know about there's friends who think she are dead she needs to react for that but she doesn't and don't get me wrong it's not like she's just brushing it off but just the way that Bill larson just acted it was just too subtle and non-caring that you didn't really care as an audience member that this was supposed to be an emotional scene you just sat there and go yeah i guess you would be sad in that situation and then the next scene goes on now that doesn't mean there's not good acting in this movie there are some actors that give it at all it's just Jude Law, for instance, is a great character in this movie. But I just wish that it utilized the simple story more and also tried to focus more on her upbringing, of her becoming a hero, of her earning and harnessing this power that she's been given. Also, a lot of the fight scene is just straight up boring. It's pretty much just the final fight scene where she's going full Super Saiyan that is entertaining. The other is just boring and on in manager. It's just there. And again, she's having, it's too easy in these fights. And yeah, I know she's getting overpowered, but still, I want to see more struggle. I want to see her be a flawed character so I could attach myself to her, so I can get to know her, so she could seem more real, more three-dimensional. And these fights was a great opportunity to show us how her mental state is at that point, and especially given the fact that she's now on a place that she kind of knows, she kind of recognizes, but she doesn't know why. And then the absolute final fight scene where she goes complete overpower and going against these spaceships is just not that fun to watch because nothing is really happening. She's just blowing things up and it's not exciting at anything. It's just stoic and there. Which means that this movie is 
a mixed baggage. On some point you have a movie that is far better than Black Panther, but on the other hand you also have a movie that doesn't really commit to the source material and more importantly it doesn't really commit to the setting has set up. It doesn't commit to the simple story, it doesn't commit to its characters, it's just there so we can get Captain Marvel into the Avengers Endgame. I'm gonna be pissed if she is the one who is powerful enough to overthrow Thanos because she is introduced this late into the MCU. I don't mind if she's the pivotal point in the plan to overthrow him in some smart way, but I don't want her to just overpower Thanos. I don't want that because no, that's just bad storytelling. So on one side, it's better than Black Panther. On the other side, don't really embrace the simple setting they set up so they can focus on the characters. However, I will say though that while I was watching it, I was really entertained. And the movie didn't really bore me at any point. I just wished I got more out of the Captain Marvel character. At this point, it was just like the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. It was just there to fill things up and introduce a new character, but in an uninteresting way. However, with that said, I will say that Captain Marvel, you should watch it in cinema, entertainment guaranteed. Because I gotta say, this movie is fucking pretty. <laughs> It has some nice cinematography. Just go watch it there. However, I will not follow you for waiting for this to come on Netflix and just catch it there. Because even though that it is entertaining to watch in the cinema, again, it could be a meh experience, but this is my rating. I'm gonna stick with it. I don't regret watching it in cinema, but I don't think I would watch it a second time in cinema. So yeah, that's how it is. Anyway, Captain Marvel, have you seen it? What did you think about it? And what is your favorite strong girl or woman character movie? I'm still thinking Aliens 2. Or Aliens, it just called. With Ripley. Just, it's just my two cents of it. Whatever you think, come bro, me your thoughts. And as always, until I see you in the next video, remember to stay awesome. Bye! Should DC then have a superhero called Captain DC? <laughs> my god, that joke is bad. Jesus.